let's take a moment to talk about how capacitors work. The fundamental idea of a capacitor is actually extremely simple. We can model a capacitor as just two metal plates. Initially, the plates are uncharged. This doesn't mean that there are no charges on the plates. It just means that there is the same number of positive charges as negative charges, and so the total charge is just zero. Let's imagine that we take a negative charge from this plate and put it onto this plate. Now, all of a sudden, we have a different scenario. Because we've removed the negative charge from this plate, the net charge is now slightly positive. And since we've now added a negative charge to this plate, the net charge of that plate is slightly negative. If we do this a bunch of times, this plate will become more positive and this plate will become more negative. Let's think about the consequences of that. We know that like charges repel. So if you had one negative charge here and one negative charge here and you let them go, they would take off in opposite directions. So if this plate is negative and we want to add another negative charge to it, those charges are going to try to push each other apart. And so we're going to have to work a little bit harder to get the charge onto this plate. The more charges we add, the more negative the plate becomes and the harder it becomes to put another negative charge on the plate. We also know that opposite charges attract. This plate gets more and more positive as we remove negative charges from it. Because of this, it will become harder and harder to remove negative charges from this plate because the attraction between the negative charges and the positive charges will become greater and greater. Of course, in real life, we don't do this by hand. We use a battery. A simple circuit involving a battery and a capacitor just looks like this. I've included a resistor here because it's generally good practice to include a resistor in any circuit. However, the basics of how the capacitor behaves are not going to be affected. What's happening in the circuit is that the battery is pulling negative charges off of one side of the capacitor and pushing negative charges onto the other. However, the battery can only push so hard. The strength with which the battery can push electric charges onto the capacitor depends on the voltage of the battery. Eventually, the capacitor will become charged up enough that the battery is no longer strong enough to push more charges onto the plates. When this happens, current will stop flowing through the circuit. Everything will just freeze. Now let's see what would happen if we took the battery out of the system. We now have a circuit that includes a charged capacitor and a resistor. This side of the capacitor has more positive charges than negative charges, and this side of the capacitor has more negative charges than positive charges. The charges don't really like this. Two negative charges want to get as far apart as possible. When the battery was in the circuit, it was preventing the charges from leaving the plates. But we've removed the battery now, so there's nothing keeping the charges on the plates. Because of this, the negative charges will fly apart, pushing current around the circuit. The negative charges will leave this plate, travel around the circuit, and end up on this plate. This will continue until the plates are again neutral, that is to say, when there is no net charge. However, just as when we were adding charges to the plates, the details of how this occurs depends on how much charge is already on the plate. For example, if we had two neutral plates and we put one extra negative charge on one of the plates, the charges will want to push each other apart. However, one negative charge is not super significant, and so the force will be minimal. However, when there are tons of extra negative charges on this plate, the force is very strong. This means that initially, the current is going to be very high, but as the capacitor discharges, the current will start to decrease. Can you think of another example that we've done in this course of a similar phenomenon? If you're thinking about exponential decay, you're on the right track.
Remember that exponential decay occurs whenever the change in a value depends on the value itself. In this case, the change in the charge on the plates depends on how much charge is on the plates. The more charge you put on the plates, the stronger the force between them, and the more likely the charges are to leave the plates and go around the circuit. Typically in these systems, we want to measure the voltage across these capacitors. Let's draw what this looks like as time passes. Let's start with the case where the capacitor is charging. On this graph, we're going to draw the voltage across the capacitor. Let's ask what the voltage across this capacitor looks like when we first plug it in. We know that initially, the plates of the capacitor have no net charge. Effectively, they behave exactly like the wires that are connecting all of these circuit elements together. This means that when we first plug the capacitor in, the voltage across it is just zero. Now let's ask what the voltage across the capacitor will look like when it's fully charged. We already discussed that when the capacitor is fully charged, current completely stops flowing through the circuit. However, the loop rule still applies. Notice though that if current is not flowing, then there is no change in voltage across this resistor. The change in voltage across the resistor is just equal to the current times its resistance. So if the current is zero, the change in voltage is also zero. If we use the loop rule then, we can ignore this resistor. If the change in voltage across this battery is some number, then we know that the change in voltage across this capacitor will just have to be negative that number. However, I'm going to graph the voltage across this capacitor as positive because we're thinking about the capacitor as charging up. So I think this is a little bit more intuitive. So we know that the final voltage across the capacitor will just be the voltage across the battery. Let's call that E. What is the shape of the line connecting these two graphs? Hey everybody, so for reasons unknown, I lost about five minutes of the video, so I'm just gonna redo it here. So we're interested in what the voltage of the capacitor looks like as a function of time. On the left-hand side, we have the uncharged capacitor at zero volts. And on the right-hand side, we have the fully charged capacitor. The x-axis is, of course, time, and the y-axis is voltage. Well, we've already discussed that the more the capacitor charges, the more challenging it is to continue charging it. So we expect the speed at which the capacitor charges to slow down as it gets closer to its maximum voltage. It probably doesn't surprise you then that the shape of the graph is just basically an upside down exponential decay. Here the capacitor is charging up very fast at the beginning, but then slows down as it gets to the end. What about the discharging of the capacitor? Well, this time we're going backwards. We're starting at the maximum voltage, which we're calling epsilon, and we're ending at zero. As before, we know that the speed at which the capacitor discharges depends on how much charge is on the capacitor. The less charge there is on the capacitor, the more slowly it will discharge. This is, of course, just an example of exponential decay. So we expect the graph of the discharging of the capacitor to look something like this. The thing to remember here is that for true exponential decay, this graph would never actually reach zero. However, in the real world, this capacitor will reach its minimum voltage of zero in some finite amount of time. For a discharging capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor can be described with this equation. At time zero, the capacitor just has voltage V0. That's just whatever voltage it was charged to by a battery. As time passes, in other words, as T increases, this capacitor starts to discharge. 
Notice that in this equation, that T is divided by RC. R is just the resistance of the resistor, and C is just the capacitance of the capacitor. We won't be doing very much math about analyzing circuits with capacitors in them, but you do need to know the general behavior. So feel free to rewatch these videos to make sure you understand why the capacitor charges and discharges the way that it does.